Hello. And welcome to this part of the pond of the Bullfrog Reviews. No one cares. No one will listen. I've seen my numbers. Why am I doing this? I should stop. My rev I do reviews and deep dives and no one no one has really touched or even cared for my deep dives. And people just want reviews but yet no one watches them all the way through. I'm this should stop. I should stop. I'm too small. I'm no one cares. No one really listens or watches. <laughs> no one does. So is this me saying goodbye? No. No. <laughs> no, this is me not saying goodbye. Nor is this me saying, what should I do? No one cares. When no one cares, I don't care. For myself, no, I don't care for myself. I don't care for life. But when I don't care, there's a small sense of courage that comes up. Something I've always wanted to do. Since no one's watching or caring, no one would mind, would they? No one would care. So when I get a little reckless and open up some courage. So get a glass from your medieval cup. Drink a lot of ice water. And I'm going to read you one of my favorite books. Is it the favorite? I don't know what is my the, what is the favorite for me. But this is a book series that I love. This is a piece of that book series that I love. This is Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. I have gushed on this. I've done a review on these on this series. I love these books. And I'm going to show you why. I am... The build-up, what's going to happen... The introduction is... It's going to be self-explained. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. And this is what... Happens. Hmm. When we get a little bit more courage, when no one cares. The wood farm appeared down a footpath. Several acres lay cleared of trees. Most at the bottom of the hill, where lush wheat grew perfectly in straight rows. A low stone wall built from carefully Stacked rocks ran the perimeter. It was a beautiful field of rich dark earth, well turned, well planted, and well drained. The homestead itself stood on the rise overlooking the field. The house was a ruined shell, its roof gone, thatch scattered across the yard. Blown by the wind. Only a few timbers remain. Splintering poles jutting up like broken bones punching through skin. The lower half of the building and the chimney were both made of irregularly shaped filled stone. And most remained mostly intact. Some of the stones lay in piles where they had slipped from their stacks. The majority appeared eerily untouched. Little things caught Adrian's attention. Mounted beneath one window hung a flower box with a scallop edge and the image of a deer carved into it. The front door, made of solid oak, did not reveal a single peg or visible joint. The stones were created from the walls, 
in alternate colors of gray, rose, and tan. Each were shipped with a fine fat or profile. The curved walkway was bordered with bushes trimmed to resemble a hedge. Theron Wood sat in midst of the ruins of his home. The big farmer with dark leathery skin had a short mangled forgotten gray had crowned the face cut by the wind of sun, wind cut by wind and sun. He looked like he was part of the earth itself, a gnarled trunk of a great tree, with the face of a weathered cliff, holding a glass cutter between his legs. He rested on the remaining wall of his home, slowly dragging a sharpening stone along the length of the huge curved scythe blade. Back and forth, the stone scraped while the old man stared down at the green field below. An expression on his face, Hagen could describe only as contempt. Daddy, I'm back! Thrace ran to the old farmer, hugging him around his neck. I missed you! Theron endured the scream, squeeze, and glared at them. Are these the ones then? Yes, this is Hadrian and Royce. They've come all the way from Colnora to help. They can get a weapon for Ezra to told us about. I have a weapon, the old man growled and resumed sharpening his blade. The sound cold, was cold and grating. This? Thrace asked. Your grass cutter? The Margrave had a sword and shield and armor, and he- Not this! I have another weapon. Much bigger. Much sharper. Puzzled, she looked around. The old man offered no insight. I don't need what lies in that tower to kill the beast. But you promised me. And I am a man of my word, he replied, and drew the stone along the edge of the blade once more. The waiting only made my weapon sharper. He dipped the stone into the bucket of water that sat behind him. He raised it back to the blade and paused and said, Every day I wake up, I see Thad's broken bed and Hickory's cradle. I see the shattered barrel that Thad made, the fields I planted for him, growing to despite me, the best season in a decade. I would have, I would have reaped more than enough to pay for the contract and tools. I would have had extra. I could have built him a shop. I might even afford it a sign and real glass windows. He could have had panned wood. A, he could have had a panned wooden door with hinges and studs. His shop would have been better than any house in the village. Better than the manor. People would walk by and stare, wondering what great man owns such a business. How great an artisan was this town's cooper that he could manage such a fine store. Those bastards in Glamador who wouldn't let Thad hang a shingle. They would have never seen the like. It would have had shaked them. It would have had a shake roof with scalloped eaves, a hard oak counter, iron hooks to hold lanterns for when he needed to work late at night to complete all his orders. His barrels would have been stacked in a storage, a shed beside the shop. A beautiful barn-sized one. I would have painted bright red so no one could miss it. I would have got him a wagon too, even if I had to build it myself. That way he could send orders all over Avrian, back to Glamondor too. 
I would have driven them there myself just to see the shock and anger on those faces. Morden, I'd say, grinning like a lipless crocodile. Here's another fine delivery of barrels from Thaddeus Wood. The best cooper in Afrian. They cringe, and curse. Yep, that boy o' mine. He's no farmer. No, sir. Starting with him, the woods were going to be artisans and shopkeepers. This village, it had grown. People would have moved in and started businesses of their own. Only Thad's would have been the first, the biggest and the best. I'd seen to that. Soon this here would have been a city, a fine city, and the woods the most successful family, a merchant family, given to the money to the arts and riding around in fine carriages. This here house would have been a true mansion, because Thad would have insisted, but I wouldn't care about that, no sir. I'd been content just watching Hickory grow. Seen him learn how to read and write. Appointed to magistrate. Maybe my grandson. In black robes. Yes, sir. Magistrate Wood is going to court in a fine carriage. Me standing there watching him. I see it. Every morning I get up, I sit, I look down Stony Hill. I see all of it. Right there. In that field growing in front of me. I haven't hoed. I haven't tilled. But it, look at it. The best crop I've ever grew. Getting taller every day. Daddy. Please come back home with us. To the Bothwicks. It's getting late. This is my home. The old man shouted. But not at her. His eyes were still on the field. He scraped the blade again, Thrace sighed. There was a long silence. This is a piece of my favorite book, one of my favorites, from my favorite book series and from a book author that has stolen my heart, quite so. Don't give up. Don't give up. I love that book. I am not stopping. People that are not gonna want, that are endured long enough to me to read that, to get to this end, thank you. Really, thank you. I am not gonna stop. I'm going to do reviews. I'm, I am going to work on my deep dives, though they have no editing or technological stuff right now or if ever. I am too small. No one is going to care. And that means I may re be reading not from just this book, but from other books. Books that I like or books that just say they need to be read aloud. We all need a little bit more courage. And sometimes it happens just because we ought, because we don't care anymore. So what is stopping us? So this is the Bullfrog signing out. Right.